IBF super featherweight champion who was sensationally and clinically taken out by new face Diego Corrales in October. He's back at lightweight against the dangerous African Ben Wondertaki. Both have only one defeat between them, no easy welcome back left. No, it's not. This is a, a tough, tough fight for Garcia, but he has got the, the boxing skills. He's very, very accomplished, beaten good fighters, you know, and he's looking for a way back to the top. Still only 25 years of age, Garcia. An excellent combination puncher. He has skills and experience. Taki only started fighting at the age of 20 back in 94, but he's built a pretty impressive record himself with 19 wins in his 20 appearances to date. The bigger man here as well, Taki. Yes, he is. He's noticeably bigger, but he's very upright. You know, he doesn't have much head movement. That's making it easy at the start for Garcia to get his punches off and catch Taki. Yes, upright, and holding his guard nice and tight, Taki. Look for Garcia to be lighter on his feet and work behind his penetrating jab which made him world champion for a couple of years. Good body shot. <laughs> Nothing coming back from Taki so far. No, it looks as if Taki's just having a look what Garcia's got. And Garcia's enjoying the, the room to work, getting his shots off well. He does look huge, Ben Wonder Taki. Weighed nine stone eleven to Garcia's nine ten. But remember Garcia's first fight, and look at this at lightweight, real speed and very effective. Well, he started very well indeed. He's got into his rhythm, getting his punches off, and then yeah, you know, I'm surprised at Taki not really coming back with shots when Garcia's getting off. 58 wins in his 61 amateur contests, Garcia, compared to nothing for Taki. Never fought as an amateur, and it's starting to show here in the first round who is the craftsman, the better boxer. Well, Taki's looking to keep his hands, and now just starting to unload, looking to bring his right hand in, show a little bit more on the offensive. Flitting around the ring. An excellent opener for Roberto, the grandpa, he calls himself Garcia. There's his father and trainer, Eduardo Garcia, as always in his corner. Well, he's got to be happy with the, the opening round. He was first to the punch. He was allowed and able to mix it up and get his punches off. And when he did, he looked very good, and Taki looked uh, quite a bit bemused by the punches that were coming at him. Here's the second of ten in the lightweight division, nine stone, nine. World champion Stevie Johnson, the WBC holder. Paul Spadafora, the IBF, probably the best two in the world. Here is Roberto Garcia in the black trunks from Oxnard, California. Up against Ben Wonder Taki from Akron, Ghana. And haven't they produced some terrific fighters over the time? A cousin of the great Azuma Nelson, Taki. <laughs> the right hand, Garcia, working off his jab. But much faster in the opener. <laughs> Taki still having trouble getting his shots off. Looks a little leaden at times. Well, the key for Garcia is to keep using lots of movement, keep moving around the ring, and keep the jab going. Don't let Taki get into the fight and get any sort of rhythm. Referee Richard Steele just breaking them in a good right to the body from Roberto Garcia. Immediately trying to slow Taki down. Never been stopped, Taki, only one defeat, and that was when he was outworked by the former world super featherweight champion, Goyo Vargas. Nice combination from Garcia, but Taki managed to 
catch most of them on his gloves. That's what he looks like he's he's trying to do. He's you know looking to absorb the, the punches from Garcia and just keep coming forward. Fitting out the jab again, Garcia, and looking for that big right hand. Not a huge puncher, Garcia, but has 24 knockouts. Well, he has the advantage, Garcia, in speed. Taggy quite ponderous with his punches. So quite heavy-handed, Taggy. 11 stop just gets a little left jab in there. Yeah, it was just a, a little chopping sort of punch. But I think Garcia just needs to keep his concentration. It's good work for him there on the defensive. And you can see the difference in speed, the way he can make Taggy miss. Nice combinations going in from Garcia. Look at the difference in height there. 5 foot 11 Taki and 5 7 to Garcia. They look weight divisions apart. But at the moment it's Garcia's boxing skill which is commanding the fight. Well, he's using his lack of height to his advantage by he's changing his levels well. He's switching it around. He's coming from different angles and he's, he's working very well at the present time, Garcia. Beautiful boxing from Garcia. Good start from the former IBF super featherweight champion. He held the title since March 98 when he outpointed Harold Warren, Roberto Garcia, and was destroyed last time out by Diego Corrales. A good fight, but eventually was cut down and dropped three times. The chin always a slight worry with Garcia. So don't, don't count out Taki here, even though he's been slow to get into the fight. He has picked a, a difficult fight to come back with Garcia, but he is handling this very well, and maybe the style of Taki is quite suiting him, the, the slowness. You know, maybe they've looked at that and think, you know, they can use their speed, use their boxing ability, you know, to, to get a good win here. Taki, the former African lightweight champion, began boxing only six years ago in Ghana, and he's having difficulty here with Garcia's speed and class. Wright's going in. Well, Garcia looking at class above here, really is enjoying himself in there, getting the shots off so well, and then showing great defensive work, just slipping under that wild left hook from Taki. Only one defeat each between them, but obviously they've been boxing at totally different levels. Yes, they have. Garcia has been in a, a much better class, even though it's been down at the, the lighter weight. He's been in with a, the better fighters and has been a world champion. How difficult is it for him to come up to lightweight, to meet a big, strong man? Well, well look at this. At present, it's proven to be very good for him. He's getting his shots off so well. And the, the difference here is speed. You know, he's got the speed to frustrate Taki, and he's really enjoying himself in there. Lovely right whipped into the body from Garcia. As Glenn says, the hand speed of the Californian is really frustrating Taki here. What's good from as well is, as yet, he's, you know, he's not taking punches from Taki, so Taki can't use his extra weight to, to weaken Garcia. Taki swinging wildly and just hasn't settled here at the MGM. Again, looking for angles, Garcia. Surely just a matter of time before those fast combinations pepper in. Taki trying to come back with a left himself, but beautiful move from Garcia. Yes, it really is a, a master class of boxing here from Garcia. But he just has to be wary. He's dropping his hands a bit. You know, the danger is he gets a bit too casual. There's Taki throwing a couple in at the bell, and Garcia just nodding. Approvement, but another big round for the Californian. Hey, you're gonna knock him. Hey, you're gonna knock him out. Now look, look. You did the right thing at the end. You you're gonna going knock to him fight. out, okay. says trainer you have Joe to cut the ring off. Don't follow him. Am I right? What are you gonna do? Cut the ring off? No, cut it off. 
Uh, cut the ring off, okay? You can knock him out. You can knock him out. Can well, he? <laughs> well, he can always be a dangerous fighter, Ben Taggy. There's always that danger. He is strong. He is a good puncher at the heavier weight. So there's always that danger. But, you know, he, it's the right sort of words from Joe Goosen. He's got to try and cut the ring off. He's allowing Garcia to get away too much. You're doing great. You're doing great. His family in the corner, as always, Roberto Garcia. His father who trains him, his brother Danny, assists there as well. His sister Chella makes his trunks, and his mother Virginia steams his meals. A family affair for the Garcias, and so far a happy comeback for the former super featherweight world champion. Remember, Garcia in the black trunks and Ben Tacky in the red, gold and green from Accra. Well, he's come out a bit more fired up now, Tacky. I think those words of advice from Goosen have spurred him on and he's looking to put a bit more pressure on Garcia. A little more bite to his work, Tacky. But again, Garcia's speed with a little uppercut and right. As Tacky covers up again. Well, he's finding the right punches, Garcia. He's getting that right uppercut in, up through the middle, and then the left hook. A joy to watch Garcia when he's boxing well. When he beat unbeaten Cuban, Raman led on in five rounds to defend his title. It was fantastic that night. And he's really enjoying it in there. Yes, he is. I think it's a sort of a point where he can enjoy himself because, you know, he's, he's much slower tacky. That's just given... Garcia the time he wants to get his shots off. How can Taki nullify what Garcia is doing? Well, really what Taki needs to do is get close and use his strength. That's what he's not doing at the present. He's got to get in and start landing punches. Garcia, again, taking control in this fourth round. He's been promised a shot at the new WBA super featherweight champion Joel Casamea if he beats Taki but interestingly enough Casamea came into the ring with Taki and is a part of his corner <laughs> meanwhile Fernando Vargas is shouting Roberto Garcia his stablemate on from ringside and he of course just beat Ike Porter another African he'd have given him some advice <laughs> well, he's the right man to give him advice, a tremendous fighter, Vargas. But it, at this moment, he doesn't look as if he needs too much advice. He's doing everything well. Just worry a bit about the way he's dropping his hands. He needs to keep them over. It just takes really one shot from Taki to change things around. So he can't be too casual. Absolutely, he's got a couple of second round stoppages on his record, Taki. Does dig a little bit, as most of the Africans do. Like Corte, big puncher. Azuma Nelson, of course. Just starting to get his jab into play a little, Ben Taki, but still being bewildered by the angles and movement of Garcia. Well, here's the fifth round of this ten-round, nine-stone, nine contest. Ben Taki with it all to do in the red, gold and green from Accra, Ghana, calls himself Wonder Taki. Has not been wonderful yet by any stretch of the imagination. Being outboxed by Grandpa Roberto Garcia, the 25-year-old from Oxnard, just 45 miles away from Los Angeles. Where they're famous for strawberry fields. Beautiful combination. Well, I think he stung Taki with some of those shots in there. Really was a dazzling combination from Garcia. Working the head and body so well. He switches it up very well indeed. He is excellently schooled. Was a very good amateur. You know, he's paid his dues. Come, you know, right, right through the right. right through the game, Garcia. And I, you know, I think that the the difference is been shown here, where Taki. You know, pretty much one-dimensional, isn't doing anything different. And even though he's naturally a, a bigger man, you know, he's not using that weight differential in the right way because he's not putting pressure on Garcia. Just looking ponderous and laboured, Taki Garcia, who in the Olympic trials 
Lost to Julian oh, oh, Wheeler back at 92. Warner, okay. Keep them up, says referee Richard Steele. It's a shutout so far. It is. He was a bit better from Taggy when he got close, but he quickly picked up a warning. He needs to stay close. Trying to close the distance down, the African. Hunter, get out! Still keeping that guard very high, as he's been doing from the opening bell, as Garcia tries to throw another left into the rib cage no holding, of no holding, Robert. He really delivers his punches well, Garcia, letting the wide hooks go around the side. He knows Taki's got that guard right in front of him, so he, he's bringing shots through the middle and then round the outsides. Let's not forget, Taki has only lost once in 20 fights. And he's been made to look very amateurish here. His last fight he came in as a late sub and fought Golden Johnson, who took Shane Mosley the distance in an IBF title fight. And Taki was working as a sparring partner at the time. He came in and had a terrific win there. He'll be looking to cause the upset, but there's no signs of it so far. There isn't. He's just not getting close enough to really put the pressure on. And you're trying you're weakening Garcia physically, you can't do that, he's given Garcia the room and another good round for Garcia. Wonderful few punches at the end of the round for Garcia. He really must be enjoying it in front of his partisan crowd. Well at times Taki was getting a little bit closer in that round but Garcia just brings it all back with good combinations like this, really does unload head and body, mixing it up left and right hooks, uppercuts, everything's going in there. Second half then, of this nine stone nine lightweight contest. Roberto Garcia, surely winning the fight quite convincingly in the black trunks. Ben Taki just has had trouble from the first round. And the online scoring there has it a shutout to Garcia. You wouldn't argue with that. I certainly wouldn't. Garcia doing everything. Good left hook from Taki and the right hand there. The first time he's really connected. Just shook Garcia up. Just gets on his bike for the first time in the fight. There's a little bit of blood to the nose of Garcia. Now that will be an encouraging sign for the African corner. Right, step back, step back. He has got power, and remember, he's a genuine lightweight, Ben Taki. Garcia having come up from the nine stone four super featherweight limit, and only his first lightweight contest of his career. Well, we know he can be dangerous, Taki, but that was the first time in this fight that he, he, you sensed any danger with Garcia, because he did shake him up a bit there with some long punches. He's also been down three times to Diego Corrales and to Ramon Ledon as well. And against Juan John Molina, he's been down a few times and the quality of his chin, Garcia, maybe at world level. It'll be interesting to see if Taki can follow up this little bit of success. And it's only a small bit so far in round six. Well, it certainly knocked a bit of confidence out of Garcia. Not the same swagger, not the same shots coming back. And this looks uh, a stronger, more determined Ben Taki. Suddenly, Garcia's punches don't have the same ferocity and his jabs falling a little short. Surely Taki will want to try and war with him and try and get Garcia to fight on the inside. Well, it's amazing. With that bit of success, Taggy, the confidence really seems to have drained out of Garcia. That's been a, a little bit of a reminder to him. A little right there as well from the African. And starting to grow in confidence. Taggy, maybe he was looking to come on late. There's still plenty of time. And now his jab looks more solid. Yes, it does. The difference now is Garcia has stopped throwing shots himself. That's allowing Taggy just to walk forward, get his shots off. Just backing 
Garcia up, who comes back with a left counter. But as he moves away, the, the speed and his legs seem to just desert him slightly. Time. Certainly more wary, and that was a breakthrough for Ben Taki. Roberto Garcia, and it looked like it for the first five against dangerous African Ben Taki. But suddenly, Taki came on strong in the last, and Garcia will have to get back to his boxing to try and outfox the African as he's been doing for most of the contest throughout this 10-round fight. He's got to keep his hands up, though, Glenn. Well, I'm sure a little reminder in the last round will make him get his hands up. Could do him a favour, could get his concentration back. He started this round a bit better, Garcia, but he needs to be busy, needs to keep Taki off balance. He's trying to hold the centre of the ring. Garcia and caught by a right from Taki. And this will favour the African, this sort of close quarters trench warfare, surely. Well, he's had to work very hard, Garcia, through the first half of this fight. And now maybe just the timing slipping slightly, and that's allowing Taki to get his shots on. This was the round that he fell apart against Diego Corrales, who, of course, has become the IBF super featherweight champion and one of the hottest prospects in boxing. Garcia back to the drawing board and with a tough, tough comeback fight now against Taki. It looks so easy. He's really going to have to dig deep to uh, keep the lead. That's better from Garcia. Yes, he's got a little spring in his step, starting to move his head more. It's been a, a bit of a shock for him, but he's now getting back to the, the work he'd done so well in the first five rounds. What would his father, Eduardo, have been saying to him in between rounds, do you think, after that hor horrible set? Well, I think he'd have been shouting at him to keep his hands up and to keep alert, to keep the concentration going. Eduardo Garcia, who's been with San Roberto from the beginning, did a lot of work in Oscar De La Hoya's training camp, but De La Hoya's trainer, Robert Alcazar, tried to take over, and Garcia stuck with his father and says he will box only with his father by his side. He's now showing a, a lot of guts himself in the ring. But being caught. It's just starting to get torn now towards the end of the round. It's been a good round for Garcia, getting his shots off well. Again, Taki ups the tempo, and they're trading the two of them. Whether this is the sort of tactics that Garcia should be operating, that's better. Well, there was an excellent right hand went in there from Garcia. I think that just stunned Taki. Right, right, step back. It may have stunned him, but the African has not looked like he's going to fall. More clean shots from Garcia, and he's finishing the round well as he started it. Better from the Californian. Yes, he re-established himself in that round, Garcia. Another good round from him. He, he had to work. And there was a good right hand from Garcia that really did shake him up. And he kept the pressure on, finished the round well, Garcia, as he had started it. Good work, rolling with his punches, getting the shots off well. But Taggy looking at a bit more of a tougher proposition now. 34 fight in Roberto Garcia's long career. Still only 25 years of age, up against 26-year-old Ben Taki in the red, gold and green trunks there on the right of your screens. The bigger man in the ring, Garcia, has been outboxing Taki to the most. There's still three rounds to go, and you can't count out the African's power. He's getting closer and a good little left-right combination goes in from the man from Accra who worked so hard on the streets there, training day in, day out to get where he is in boxing today. Well, he's finding more of a rhythm. rhythm. He's warming up to the job now, Taki, getting his shots off much quicker. His manager, Michael Tete, said that he will come on strong in the later rounds, Ben Taki, and that's what he's doing. A little right gets in and Garcia's being hit too cleanly now for my liking. 
Well, it's all becoming much harder work for Garcia. He's still doing well, but he's got to keep those shots going. And you see the extra strength is now taking more of a toll. No question of the quality of Roberto Garcia, but he's being drawn into Taki's fight here. And they're going punch for punch. Good one, this, isn't it? It's a really good fight, this. Enjoying it. Good right hand from Garcia. This is a very good round as well, going one way, then the other. Garcia really having to use his concentration for Taki just becoming more and more forceful in there. The little man with the speed against the big, powerful African who will prevail as we go into the straight of the fight really now. Well, Garcia is starting to, he's having to plant his feet and look for harder shots. He's landed with a couple of good right hands in this round, but by planting his feet, it also leaves him there for Taki to come back with counters. And look at his hands when he's not punching, how far down they are. Well, that's a problem, and that's always been there. He's relying on his good head movement, good lateral movement to get him out of trouble, but he's got to keep doing that. Again, tries to pepper in six or seven punches to the head of Taki, but then to the body, but Taki's withheld this. It's been a very clean fight, a good contest, and Richard Steele hasn't had to get involved. Well, I think this is a closer back. round, but I think still there. Garcia did enough for me. You can do it, again. Joe Goosen in his corner, Ben Taki trying to G him up. He's only got two rounds, six minutes left, in which to put a dent in Roberto Garcia's formidable lead in this fight. Garcia, remember, in black trunks. Taki in the red, gold and green from Accra. 11 knockouts in his 19 wins, and he probably needs one now. Well, he's got to get close enough. He's got to get the shots off. He's really warming up as the fight's gone on. There's a lot more punches coming in the late rounds from Taki than there was in the early rounds. And really, you wonder why he didn't start faster earlier. Put your arms back. Pull them back. Come on. Let's have a look at how Glenn's got it. Six points up there to Garcia. Blood again from the Californian's nose as he tries to get back on his bike and he's just drawing him in and he looks tired now, Garcia. Well, he's had to throw so many punches to keep Taki at bay. You know, this has been very hard for Garcia. It's took an awful lot out of him. You know, it is really down to concentration and just keeping going, Garcia. Right hand from Taki. And one or two miss, but Garcia suddenly looks a little unsteady on his legs. And this comeback fight, right hand over the top. A looping one Three, from Ben Taki. Four, down goes Garcia. Five. It's all started Seven, to go wrong for eight. the Californian. It was going so well. He's up. Get back in the get corner, back. says Richard Steele. Taki desperate to get to his man as quickly as possible. Garcia doesn't look that badly hurt. No, he doesn't. He got a little bit extra time there after the count with Taki coming out of the corner. He needs all the time he can get. It's now down with how much he's got in his legs, Garcia, because he's going to need those legs to keep out of the way as Taki is coming on stronger. Taki knew in the sixth round he could hurt Garcia. Now he knows he can floor him. Can he stop him? His legs look much more leaden, Garcia. Just off balance there as Taki wades in. Much better now from Taki, looking strong, looking confident. But he's still got to keep throwing punches. He's just giving Garcia time to recover. Really, Garcia, if your scorecard's accurate, has just got to stay on his feet for the remaining four minutes or so. Well, his head clearing a bit now, Garcia getting his punches off again. He really needs to be active with it, his hands. He needs to keep the punches going just to keep Taki thinking. And to remind Taki, he is a class above this. But Taki is not worried by this. He's right hand happy. He's looking for that shot that 
Claude Garcia with a left to the body as well. And Garcia goes wearily back to his father in the corner. What will they be saying? Well, that was a, a big round. That was a big round for, for Taki. It's got to be a 10 8 round for him. So Garcia's, you know, the point of going back. So he, you know, he really needs to keep out of trouble. It's very important. Keep his concentration. There was a chopping right hand to the top of the head. And you know, he was stung by that. He didn't do a great deal in the rest of the round, but try and keep out of the way. There was chopping downward punch onto the side of the head. And that one really rocked him a bit there. That hurt, took a long time to recover. Let's go, they say, in Taki's corner. He's got three minutes to surely stop Roberto Garcia and dent the dream that Garcia has of regaining the world title either at Super Feather or Lightweight. He started fast in this last Garcia, but he's got to keep out of the way of Taki's right hand, his power. Well, Taki's come out full of fire. He knows he can hurt him. was a corker of a shot from Ben Taki. Garcia's down. I don't know whether he's going to make this. Richard Steele gets to seven. He gets up on his leg. There's blood streaming from his nose. It's over. What a win for Ben Wonder Taki. And a disaster for Roberto Garcia, the Californian who had the fight surely won. And the only thing he had to do was stay on his feet. And he walks into a countering left like that. Well, it just looked as if it was getting on the card. I was unsure that he would have the time to get the shot on, but very early in the round, he got the punch that mattered on. That was a big left hook. He got up, Garcia said he was all right, but his nose was streaming blood, and he looked very hurt from that punch. The biggest win of Ben Taki's career, and you have to feel sorry for California's Roberto Garcia. He was boxing beautifully, but seemed to run out of steam. And the tactics down the straight of Taki works brilliantly. Well, he started like he didn't have the, the tactics to win the fight. But look at that left hook. He certainly had the punch to finish the fight. And that's all it took. One big left hook from Ben Taki. But Garcia has got to be heartbroken. What a nightmare for him. Looked as if he had it in the bag. Started so well and it all went so terribly wrong at the end so many fighters have an easy comeback this was anything but but ben taki has got to be rewarded a tremendous left hand there was richard Steele right to stop it well uh, yeah, he'll feel very hard done by garcia but your know, referee's got to look at how good he was he took a lot of punches over the last couple of rounds and a beautiful shot to finish it a new danger man in the division, Ben Taki. Well, where does Roberto Garcia go from here? Maybe into retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, in a dramatic final end to this bout, we have the time of 35 seconds in round number 10. Our referee in charge, Richard Steele, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of technical knockout, Ben Wonder Tacky.